Another one that's useful, not so much in its own right, but more for developing other things we'll, we'll talk about later, is a uh, uniformly charged thin ring. Okay, so let's say you have, I'm going to draw my coordinate axes a little bit in perspective here, where x is kind of like that and z is kind of like that. And what I'm going to draw is a thin ring that lies in the x, y plane. Draw the axis going in front like that. Okay, so the z-axis is coming through the center of the ring, and it's perpendicular to the ring, and the ring is in the uh, in the uh, x-y plane. And really, this is the uh, the positive x direction, and this is the negative x direction. So draw like that. Okay. So. This ring has a radius, we'll call it R. It has a total charge, Q. And our job is to find the electric field at an observation location that is right on the z-axis going through the center of the ring. So we'll just call that distance z. Okay? So this is observation location 0, 0, z. So we're going to go through the same steps again. We're going to break it up into pieces, write an expression for the delta E of one piece, sum up all the delta E's, and then check the result. Before we even do the calculation, what would you expect? If this is a positively charged ring, for example. When we get a result, what would you expect for the direction of the net electric field due to that positively charged ring? Down the z-axis, right? Down the z-axis. Why, why? What's happening? When you break, okay, so let's break it up into pieces. Here's a piece that's, say, at some random location in the uh, xy plane. I would have to look at an r vector that points from the, uh, the uh, source to the observation location, kind of like that. And then the delta E would point away from that positively charged piece. And so we have something that has, you know, it has an, a Z component, it has an X component and a Y component. But what's going to happen to all the X and Y components when we add everything up? They're all going to cancel out. They're all going to cancel out, right? And again, we can use the computer to visualize that for us. So let's take a look at um, this one, I believe. So here's our ring, and it's on, again, the xy plane. So let me change the perspective a little bit. So we're going to break it up into pieces, okay? So there, there's a, uh, this first piece is right at the top here, this little chunk, this little uh, cyan globe, if you can see this. Uh, let me kill the lights, that might help. So we break it up into point charges. There's a little point charge at the top, a little chunk of this uh, ring. We draw the uh, R vector. The green arrow is the R vector that points from the, uh, the delta Q to the observation location. And then the orange arrow is the delta E, the electric field just due to that piece alone. Go to the next piece, and now we're just going to keep all the delta E's on the screen here. So we go to the next point along the ring, calculate that delta E, calculate the next delta E to the next piece, and so on, and so on, and so on, going around the ring. Okay. And if I rotate this back, look like this, as we go around the ring, we see that we get a bunch, of, a bunch of delta E's that are all the same magnitude, right? All, the, uh, all kind of pointing radially outward, but yet they all have a net positive Z component. So all the X and Y components, if we look at it from this perspective, will cancel out. 
but all the Z components will add together, and so we end up with a rather large electric field on drawn to this scale, right? We had to draw the scale so we could see the uh, delta E's, and so the E is kind of big. But if it's but okay, so we get the result we expect. Okay, we get the result we expect. So let's actually try it. Let's actually try going through, or at least setting up the integral, the analytic integral, to actually get a result here. Okay, so we've divided up the delta Qs. We say that the um, we want to break this up into little point charges, each with a charge of delta Q. Okay, and then we're going to write an expression for the electric field of one piece. Well, the electric field is going to be um, 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0, delta Q over little r squared times r hat. So I have to figure out what this r is. Um, tell you what, let's do it this way changing the rules slightly, but just to make it a little simpler to see and not have to deal with so much math. I'm going to change, I'm going to look just at this piece at the very top. Okay. So here's the R vector. Points from the very top down to here, and it's making a delta E in that direction. What is position, a vector position of the a piece at the very top. That would be x equal to 0, y equal to capital R, right, the radius, and z equal to 0, right? And then our, our observation location is 0, 0, z. So little r is going to be 0, 0, z minus 0, r. 0, or 0, negative r, z. The magnitude of that thing is going to be square root of r squared plus z squared. Okay. And then r hat is 0, negative r, z over square root r squared plus z squared. So, I write all this out as 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 delta Q over square of this thing is the square of this thing, so that's just R squared plus Z squared times the vector 0, negative R, Z over square root r squared plus z squared. If I simplify that a little bit, I'm going to have this factor to the 3 halves in the denominator times this vector 0, negative r, z. Okay. Are we okay so far? So then we already said that only the z component matters because all the x's and y components are going to cancel out. Okay, So I'm just going to worry about the z component. And the z component of this thing, delta E sub z, is 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0, z times delta Q over r squared plus z squared to the 3 halves power. And I'm almost ready now to do the summation, but there's one thing I got to do. Anybody remember from last time what do we have what we have to do? What do we have to do to that delta Q? Okay, it has to turn to dQ. That's true. Everything has to become an infinitesimal, but we have to write this delta Q in terms of what do we call that special thing? The variable that's changing as we go around the ring is called, in general, it's called the integration variable, right? So we have to put delta Q in terms of the integration variable. The integration variable is the variable that's changing as we do the summation, okay? So 
what's changing as we move from one piece to the next as we go around this ring? The angle, yeah, the angle is changing. Right, we can describe where this particular piece is by looking at the angle theta. By looking at the angle theta, okay? So, let's ask this question. 